Music. Study or listen to boost cognition. Henry Dreyer is a 92-year-old dementia patient living in an assisted living center. Henry sits alone in a wheelchair in the middle of a room, eyes downcast, face empty. His body seems vacant too. In the documentary film featuring him, Henry is described by famed neurologist Oliver Sacks as inert, maybe depressed, unresponsive, and almost unalive. Henry has barely spoken to anyone in the decade he's lived at the center. This is not how he used to be, his daughter relates. Henry was outgoing for most of his life, blessed with a passionate love affair for the Bible and for dancing and singing. It was not unusual for him to spontaneously burst out into song in public. On this day, Henry is part of a project helping elderly people reconnect by listening to music they love. Henry is given an iPod loaded with music. As soon as Henry hears the music, Henry starts making a noise, like a horn. Suddenly, Henry's eyes grow wide. His face instantly lights up, a bit contorted. Henry grabs his wrists and starts swaying, smiling and singing. Henry becomes alive. When the iPod is turned off, Henry doesn't slink back into silence. He becomes articulate, funny, and very enthusiastic. Do you like music? Someone asks off camera. Henry answers, I'm crazy about music. You play beautiful music, beautiful sounds. What was your favorite music when you were young? Cab Calloway, Henry responds, then starts scatting. He sings, I'll be home for Christmas with accurate pitch, wonderful emotion, and occasionally correct lyrics. He is asked, what does music do to you? Face still animated, arms now gesticulating with purpose, Henry responds, it gives me the feeling of love, romance. I figure right now the world needs to come into music, singing. You've got beautiful music here, beautiful, lovely. I feel a band of love. <laughs> Dr. Sachs is delighted. In some sense, Henry is restored to himself, he enthuses. He has remembered who he is, and he's reacquired his identity for a while through the power of music. I barely heard Dr. Sachs because I started tearing up. It's one of the most moving videos I've ever seen. How does music light up the brain, as it clearly did for Henry? What effects does it have on young and old? What does listening to music do to the brain compared with being trained in music? Scientists have intensively investigated these questions. In asking whether exposure to music produces benefits in non-musical cognitive domains, scientists have looked at academic areas like reading and math. They've looked at general intelligence. They've studied the effects of music on speech, physical development, and mood. And now we think we have an understanding of at least some of the effects of music on cognition. Why think instead of know? Music research is complicated, starting with the fact that not everyone agrees what music is or why it exists. How would you define music? Scientists aren't sure how the brain defines music, in part because there is no universal agreement about exactly what music is. What may be annoying, unorganized environmental noise to a person raised in culture A at time point A might be rapturous, organized, beautiful music to a person raised in culture B at time point B. For example, in 1971, George Harrison of the Beatles organized a benefit concert called the Concert for Bangladesh with sitar master Ravi Shankar. Shankar tuned his instrument before performing, an event heard over the loudspeakers by the mostly Western audience. The crowd clapped and cheered with wild enthusiasm. As they began to settle, Ravi addressed them. Thank you. If you like our tuning so much, I hope you will enjoy the playing more. <laughs> Rap is another example. It is clearly speech and also clearly what? Music? Generations don't agree. Neither do composers. Neither do sociologists. One professor of music and science at Cambridge defines music this way. 
Musics, yes, the author said musics, can be defined as those temporally patterned activities, individual and social, that involve the production and perception of sound and have no evident and immediate efficacy or fixed consensual reference. <laughs> That's not exactly the way everyone would describe music. The definition of music has been so tough to determine that neuroscientist Seth Horowitz, in his book, The Universal Sense, titled a chapter, quote, $10 to the first person who can define music and get a musician, a psychologist, a composer, a neuroscientist, and someone listening to an iPod to agree, close quote. 